Welcome back to World Bicycle Relief Week here on GCN, helping to change lives through the power of bicycles. Hopefully you've seen a couple of the recent videos on GCN where we followed some locals here in Zambia using buffalo bikes and how important they are to their daily life. Uh, well today we've been invited here to the assembly plant to see exactly how the buffalo bikes are put together. That's a heavy door and I'm quite weak. Come in here, this is the World Bicycle Relief Buffalo Bikes Assembly Room. Uh, there's a core group of 10 people who put the Buffalo Bikes together uh, where they will then be put into the various storerooms that we have over this side. But we thought we'd show you exactly how they go about building the Buffalo Bike from start to finish. So we are going to start over here with Kelvin. Uh, he is the man who takes the bare frames at the very start and as you can see he puts the forks in and the headset and the bearings but he is also in charge of putting the bottom bracket in, the cranks on and also the pedals. Once he's finished with that he will then put it over here and it will be ready for a central part which we will get onto a little bit later. Uh, over here is a man who has probably the most intricate job of all the people here making the buffalo bites. This is Mabin. Uh, as you can see, he is in charge of making up the mud guards or the fenders for those of you over in the US. Uh, and if you zoom in right now, you will see a load of very, very small bolts and pieces to put those fenders together. And he is using, as you can see, a power drill to make sure that everything is as tight as it should be and doesn't rattle loose when it's getting some rigorous use out in rural areas. Uh, as I said, we will get on to these guys, Evans and Julius, and just a few moments time but before we get to them I want you to come over to the back end here because this is where the wheels are all made from scratch. So there's a core group of four people here. We have Wigan, we have Python who's going to help me build a bike a little bit later on and uh, we've also got Joe and Dennis. So the first two, Wigan and Python, they are in charge of the spokes. So they will individually put each of the 36 spokes into the front and rear hubs and then when it goes over to Python there in the corner, he will feed them into the rim with the nipples etc and at the end of that we have a wheel which looks like this. So it looks like a wheel, not much use on any bike let alone a buffalo bike. Uh, so that is when they will go on to Joe and his partner in crime over here. Their job is to tension them up and make sure that the dish is central. There's quite a lot of quality control goes into each stage of the process as well. And then finally, or almost finally, penultimately should I say, if we head over to where George is, just over here. Uh, George is in charge of putting the tyre and the inner tube and the wheel reflectors on. These are all very important parts, obviously. Uh, the tyre needs to be at exactly 60 psi. That is what they have found uh, to be the most durable. They are special tyres, incidentally, with a slightly different compound, which allows them to last uh, a year or two, as opposed to around three months that you would get with rigorous use with a normal compound. Uh, so he will make sure that the tyre is correctly seated on here and completely uh, okay for the next person to use. Then, all of those separate parts, so the bit that Kelvin did at the start and then the fenders and the wheels that are completely built up, they will come over to Julius and Evans, normally there's two of them based here in the middle, and they will put the whole lot together. Now those two are also in charge of putting the handlebars and the stem together and also the grips. So it will come to these two central stations and by the time that Evans and Julius have finished, we'll pretty much have a full buffalo bike, but there are two parts still missing. So the very final part of the process rests with this man, Urim. Now he has a very important job. Uh, first, he's got two parts to finish off first. The belt, which is what he's doing now, so people can hear when a rider is coming. Uh, he also does the chain guard down at the bottom here. But finally, Urim's job is quality control. So he makes sure that everything is absolutely perfect on these buffalo bikes before he then agrees to put them in the storage room, which is just behind you. Oh, I should probably let those guys crack on with their job. Uh, but they have become incredibly efficient in the years that they've been doing it over here in Zambia to the point where on a good day, and if they are needed to, they can apparently build a hundred buffalo bikes, which really is quite incredible when you consider that there's 36 spokes and that means 200 wheels. Very spectacular indeed. Now a lot of these guys have been working here for a few years because it's a very nice place uh, for a Zambian to work because they get medical provision and care, but they also, if they are required to do over time, actually get paid over time, which is a rarity. Uh, for what we understand over here. Now, I understand that Python has got a little job for me to do. 
happy with Bruce to find out what that is. Right, so now we have been looking at the professionals doing their job very efficiently over there in the assembly room. Uh, they've decided that I should also have a go at assembling a Buffalo bike myself. So, hope you've got some patience out there. It's a process which they make look very easy and which I don't. I blame the lack of power tools, or perhaps lack of power of any sort. Yeah, it's still got a quarter turn on it. <laughs> I'm happy with that, it's quite straight. Anyway, whilst I'm struggling to turn some screws, let's have another look at how these bikes are actually used. A couple of days ago, we went to a distribution day, a quite overwhelming experience. Now, at the end of it, we met Tassila. We joined her as she, for the first time, rode the seven kilometers home instead of walking. Tassila is the youngest of eight in her family. None of her siblings finished their education, the distance to school just proved too much. And Tassila herself, in fact, actually stopped a couple of years ago too. However, a friend convinced her to continue her studies, and it was this determination which earned her a buffalo bike. She's now got a much better chance of finishing school and has ambitions of eventually becoming a nurse. Here we are. That was tough. Poor Tassila's got a really big climb up to her house, but that was a maiden voyage on a newly donated buffalo bike. I think she enjoyed it. These are the differences that your donations are making in the real world. What time do you normally? 05. 05, you start walking. And now with this, what time do you think you will leave? 6.20. 6.20, an hour and 20 difference. Having seen it firsthand, it's really quite emotional. For us, a bike is a means of being sociable, healthy, a means of being competitive or adventurous. For them, it's a means to a better life. Help us this year to raise as much as possible by clicking on the link on your screen right now and donating whatever you can. And we're done. We're going to ride it. Thank you very much, Tyson. Well, I think I've decreased their productivity in the day, having used Tyson for the best part of an hour, but uh, we're there. We've got a bike. It's all holding together so far. I did offer Pison a backy, but he didn't want to get on for some reason. Uh, right, well, all that leaves us to say is a huge thank you to World Bicycle Relief for inviting us here to the assembly plant to find out how all these Buffalo bikes are made. Hopefully, somebody will get the use of this one at some point after it's gone through some quite severe quality control. Uh, we are, as you very well know, trying to raise as much money as we possibly can for World Bicycle Relief again this year uh, so that we can get as many of these bikes to the people that need them, because as the tagline goes, Bicycles really do make a huge difference to people's lives over here. So if you'd like to see details of how you can donate to World Bicycle Relief, uh, you can find that in the description just down below this video. And if we raise enough money, it won't be me shaving my hair this year, but instead Matt and Si are going to ride pretty much naked across central London. So that's worthwhile in itself, I think you have to say. Uh, so follow that link and please do donate generously as you did in 2016. Now, if you would like to see exactly how these bikes are used over here in Zambia, you can click through to the following two videos. Just down here, we follow a student and just down here, a local farmer.